Hey, what's going on guys? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. In this video, working on a 2010 Dodge Grand Caravan. Customer complains that every time he starts a car, it cuts off, doesn't run at all. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what I found. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right guys, after hooking a scanner to it, I came up with a code P0339. That's the crank position sensor. Based on this, it said out of 125 repairs, it's fixed it 94 times by just replacing it. But we don't want to replace just replace parts to be replacing parts. We want to check it first. And if you read this here, basically a crank sensor is just a Hall effect switch. It's powered by five volts. And what that does is it reads the speed of the crankshaft. And if it's not picking up any rotation, you won't get fire, you won't get spark, you won't get anything and the vehicle won't start. And what I did to test it was I took my scanner, I hooked to it, and I cranked the engine, and in my scanner I could read RPMs. There was no RPMs. So I went to the sensor itself, checked it, there was five volts, and I ohmed the wire going from the sensor to the computer, it was good. So that eliminated everything right there. You got a bad switch. That's the easy part. Let me show you where the switch is located at. This is gonna be the hard part. Check it out. All right guys, let me show you where it's located at. I'll try and get a good view for you but there's an exhaust crossover pipe and you're gonna put your hand just right here. And if you look down there, you can see it. The screwdriver's tapping on it right here. It's got one 10 millimeter bolt and a connector. I've already loosened up the connector and we'll take a small ratchet and go down there and get that 10 millimeter bolt and then that sensor will just pull right out. Like I said earlier, I already disconnected the electrical connector and this is a setup that I'm gonna use to get that bolt out. I'm gonna take this off and try a deep well. It was just a little bit too low and it was hitting that heater core pipe. This might even be a little bit too low also. Guys, I think I'm gonna put an extension on it. Just find the right combination. That's all you gotta do. You would think they would've made it a little bit easier way to do this. I think I got it now. That's it. So definitely use a deep well, quarter inch drive, and an extension, and that'll bring you out far enough where you can get some decent turns on that bolt. I've got it just about out. I'm gonna see if I can get my hand on it and maybe turn it a little bit by hand now. No, I can't. All right, so what I'm gonna do, because I don't wanna lose a bolt, I'm gonna get some electrical tape and we're gonna break a piece off, about maybe yay big, and I'm gonna stick it just like this, and then I'm gonna put the bolt right in here, so that way when I'm done, it'll stay on there. Once I got it to a point, I took the ratchet off, and then with the tape on the bolt, you're able to pull it out and not lose the bolt. That's the new sensor going in. Uh, the easiest way is gonna be to, I guess, reach around from the back side of your left hand and try to put it in. I've um, I missed the hole twice, to be honest with you, trying it and see it, and I can't get it from this way. It came out easier than it went in. They don't give you no freaking room, man, it's bull crap. I tried that way, that didn't work, so I'm definitely gonna try and go back this way with it. The left hand side, once I get it in the hole, it would be all right. Just getting to that hole isn't a problem. All right, we are in like Flynn. With the tape in there and the bolt in here, it's pretty secure. I should be able to go back that way from the backside and get it started. At least I'm hoping so. You definitely gotta have good mobility for this guys and some patience. The skill level on this is probably maybe a two. It's not hard, just have patience. This is something that you do at home though, after you had a couple beers in the driveway. All right, get the ratchet back on here. You know, there's so many more places they could have put this crank sensor, you know, for better accessibility than what they did and got the same results. It made it easier for us technicians to repair that. So like I said, just have patience. If you're at home, have a beer, relax, make an hour project of it, and you're done. Now we get the sucker plugged in. Snap. Heck yeah. Bam. I think I'd rather put a timing chain on a Lexus. All right, let's get the jump box. We'll get it started and clear these codes out. All right, we've been running it now for about 10 minutes. Uh, the readings look good. All the lights are out. The only light is on is that tire monitor light. I'm probably gonna do a video in the future about that light right there. Explain why they come on and why the sensors go to sleep and what you have to do to fix that. So be on the lookout for that. Guys, that is it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Catch you later.